This is Joe Ancola with OKRaw.com. I have another exciting episode for you coming at you from one of my favorite places in the world, my garden. I always encourage all you guys to get back out to nature, whether it's your garden, going for a hike, going for a run in the woods or whatever. I mean, we all have a deep connection with nature. I mean, that's how for thousands of years we've all lived like in nature, but now we live in such artificial environments. And actually that kind of brings me to the talk of today. Got an email from a friend of mine and he said, Hey John, have you seen this article? What do you think of it? And uh, basically the article he forwarded to me was simply titled this, How Green Smoothies Can Devastate Your Health. What? Green smoothies could devastate your health? Like, man, it makes it sound like it's an abomination, man. It's like green smoothies are the worst thing you could ever do for your body. And uh, like, man, so I'm like, man, I gotta read this. Maybe I've been doing it wrong all these years. Ooh. So anyways, here's a summary of the article. I'm not gonna read you the whole article. If you really need to read it, you could do a Google search on it, but you know, I'll tell you guys what's up. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my opinions on this particular subject. Um, this should not be taken as medical advice. This is only for uh, entertainment purposes only, and I'm sure in my opinions, if you do have some kind of health condition, please see a medical practitioner that has some kind of degree after his name. Uh, because you know I've just been researching health and living uh, the healthiest way that I know how because I needed to do this when I was young I almost lost my life and that's what motivates me and make, keeps me going each and every day to share the information I've learned because literally I'm happy to be alive today so anyways let's uh, talk about the summary of this article it says green smoothies are all the rage these days with many people consuming them every day or at least several times a week in an attempt to get healthy and alkalinize the body. Whenever I visit the cafe of my local, and that's where the summary ends, but basically in the article, uh, the author is saying that the number one reason why green smoothies may undermine your health is because of one ingredient that's contained in the leafy green vegetables. As you can see, I mean, it's green all around me. And most of the leafy greens have this one quote unquote anti-nutrient in it and the anti-nutrient is oxalic acid so have you ever eaten spinach and got that chalky flavor in your mouth like that chalky taste and it's even more pronounced if you eat like New Zealand spinach which I don't particularly care for so much but I have friends that like it and even something like lamb's quarters has that oxalic acid taste also beet greens the chenopodium family plant same as the spinach have this as well but even things like kale and even things like figs and you know mandarin oranges and other a lot of other foods contain these oxalates the whole premise of this article is that oxalates are a bad anti-nutrient and you shouldn't eat them and so is it really that bad and you know what are my thoughts on this so first I want to explain to you I mean as a gardener as somebody that grows food I know about these things because you know you got to think and ask yourself why do the plants contain the oxalates? Is it because it's an anti-nutrient for us? Is it because it's a nutrient for us? Is it a nutrient for the plants? I mean, why do they need these anti-nutrients? You know, whether they're phytates or oxalates or, you know, goitrogenous compounds. You know, what's the deal? Why are they in these plants? So, you know, in plants, plants are out in nature. And in nature, in a polyculture where there's different things growing not just a monoculture like many factory farmed and yes even organic food is monocultured factory farmed um, foods are produced you know they would live naturally and you know bugs come and bugs would want to eat the plants I don't spray these plants with actually anything I just let them fend for themselves and you know the plants have to produce the oxalates to keep the insects and other critters at bay because if the plants didn't have the oxalates then something could just come here and munch on all the plants and then the plants wouldn't be able to reproduce. You know, one of the life's missions of the plants and also us is to reproduce. And so if it, if it can't reproduce, it's failed. So it produces the oxalates in there to ward off other bugs and, you know, funguses and molds and, uh, you know, creatures from eating it. Because if certain creatures eat oxalates or whatever other anti-nutrients are in the specific food, because there's so many different compounds and men are even undiscovered, um, then the animals aren't gonna like it, they'll get sick or something will happen to them. So that's why they're in there. So that being said, you know, there are anti-nutrients for sure. They're in there for the plant's benefit, not ours. And you know, we have adapted over 
years to handle these oxalates, you know, in our digestive system. Because, you know, in my opinion, man's original diet was largely plant-based, plant-focused. You know, they're eating, people were eating leafy greens and fruits. And yeah, they'd eat some animals once in a while when they'd be able to get them. But most of the time, they eat diets rich in fruits and vegetables. So they, our bodies have adapted over time to deal with small amounts of these oxalates. Now we know why oxalates are in the foods. The next things I want to go are talk about the points about the article specifically. So point number one is, you know, everybody has an agenda. I have an agenda. My agenda is to teach you guys the healthiest diet that I've learned about that I share with you guys is to share my knowledge and all the research I've done in the, my, the school of hard knocks that I've been to over the last 18 years eating a plant-based raw foods diet. And that's what I share, and that's my agenda, because I'm happy to be alive. I'm sharing this with you guys, and, you know, I don't sell stuff. I don't sell pills and bottles. I don't sell you anything. I sell you the, the fact that you need to eat more fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. Do I say you need to eat all fresh fruits and vegetables? No, that's what I do, but I always encourage everybody to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables. Most Americans are not simply eating enough fruits and vegetables. So that's, that's point number one. And so everybody has an agenda. So I don't know the specific author's agenda. If she has an agenda, why she would say green smoothies are bad and make it like, oh, they're the worst thing that could undermine your health and they're not good for you. And then in the same token, if you look on her website, one of her recent articles she posted was a, <laughs> was a recipe on how to make, uh, you know, uh, bone broth marrow omelets with, you know, bone marrow and eggs and milk. So in my opinion, you know, I think that, you know, bone marrow, <laughs> dairy products and eggs are far worse than green smoothies because it's, there's proven evidence that when you eat foreign proteins like from animals, whether it's a meat, you know, um, an egg or their dairy products, there's a, there's, a, there's a reaction. It's like if I got a liver transplant from my brother, I would have to take immunosuppressive drugs for the rest of my life to be able to accept that liver transplant, even though it's from another human, from my brother that shares most of my DNA. So when we eat animal products from another species, we get that. When we eat plants, you know, we don't get that reaction, Im immune response reaction. So that's the first thing I like to say, what is the agenda? And it's fine, everybody has an agenda, man, but what I wanna teach you guys is to not just follow the person's agenda, not just follow what I say, but do your own research. And if you do research like I've done, you'll find and come up with the same answers that I've come up with, and that's why I share these videos with you guys. I don't want you guys to be the sheeple, man. Don't be the people that just follow people because that's what they say, and don't follow me from what I say. You know, I encourage you guys to do research on this, and you'll find most of the time, you know, what I'm saying is, well, it's always my truth, but in my opinion, it's always accurate to the best of my ability, and it's what I do in my life personally, to have superior health, a healthy weight, and to have, you know, boundless energy to keep making videos almost every day for you guys. So number one, you know, what's the motivation behind this? Because we all know that leafy greens are the highest nutrient-dense foods on the planet. They have the most amount of nutrition and the least amount of calories. Processed foods and animal foods are more calorie dense without as much nutrition, especially the micronutrients, the phytochemicals, and the phytonutrients that are so important for people. I mean, in America, people are underfed but overnourished. I mean, we're eating tons of caloric foods, high calorie foods, junk foods, fast foods, and people are bigger than ever, but they're very unhealthy. So look at you know cultures from around the world that have eaten nutrient dense diets based around plants. Yeah, with some animal products and uh, you know many situations, but small amounts. You know the leafy greens and the fruits and the plant based products should make up the majority of what you eat. With the animal products, a little bit. In America, we got it flipped on its ass. We got a lot of meat with a small side of salad, iceberg lettuce, man. Another thing I want to say is that there's foods far worse than leafy greens. You know. I always want you guys to think of in your head, good, better, best. Okay, leafy greens, yes, they got some oxalates, they got some bad things about it, but you know, McDonald's and high cholesterol foods and high animal product foods cause a immune re response and you know, have been shown to you know, lessen your lifespan and a whole bunch of other things <laughs> that you don't want to happen to you. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that you know, if you're growing your own foods, which I recommend everybody to grow their, your own foods, you can grow low oxalate foods, for example, there are special varieties of spinach, because spinach is high in oxalates, you should never eat spinach, right? 
Well, there's varieties of spinach that have been bred specifically with the oxalates out of them. So now you can eat as much spinach as you want, although I still wouldn't do that, and not get the you know high oxalate content because there's low oxalate content spinach. And that stuff probably tastes really good. It's one of my goals to start growing low ox oxalate spinach. And I want to see how it tastes because it's got to taste different than regular spinach that has all the high oxalates because it has that leaves that chalky film on your mouth. So I bet it's super delicious, man. But, you know, if you're growing your own food, you could choose low oxalate varieties plus the nutrients in the food and how much nutrition the food has in it is based on how it's grown. In conventional agriculture and even organic agriculture today, they're adding, you know, basically three minerals, N, P, K, adding back into the soil. And when they do that, the plant doesn't have the nutrition it needs to fully be optimal and have a full wide spectrum of nutrition. Plus, that may change the characteristics of the plant to produce certain, you know, factors more or less. For example, if you overfeed nitrogen in the plant, the plant will have more, you know, nitrogenous products within it and you know one of the you know and that's nitrates and so yes leafy greens also contain nitrates which can be an anti-nutrient but it depends on how the plant is grown so you know to control these because you can't control when you're buying your produce you can't control them in your garden making sure your your soil is well balanced and has microbiology activity that's going to help break down some of the toxins in the soil so that your plants could absorb the nutrition it needs and get it in the right proportions that nature would have intended out in a big you know rainforest that conventional farming totally does not duplicate even organic farming does not duplicate to such a large extent in my opinion so it's true that greens do contain oxalates and yes some contain more oxalates than others so as i mentioned spinach really high in oxalates probably like the whole spinach chenopodium family of plants including lambs quarters and beets and swiss chard they have lots of oxalates but you know even kale or some collard greens that i have here my tree collards purple tree collards or my green tree collards they all have oxalates but in much lower amounts so it may behoove you to research the plants that are higher and lower in oxalates and you know uh, don't eat a whole lot of plants that have high oxalates all the time for example, one of the things I recommend is what's called diet rotation. Because there is naturally occurring toxins in all the foods around me, and yes, even tomatoes have naturally occurring toxins, which are lessened when the tomatoes are more ripe, and I would never eat you know, tomato leaves. Um, we want to eat foods that have different levels of toxins all the time. You know, For example, uh, th these collards have different toxins than the shiso. It's a Japanese herb related to the mint that looks like a caterpillar has been munching on because I'm organic and not spraying. Mmm. Wow. Man, that's good. You guys got to try fresh shiso, dude. Run and rock this. It's the bomb. It tastes like... has a minty over flavor with like a little hint of parsley. This would make amazing salad, man. Oh my gosh. But anyways, every plant has different naturally occurring toxins, so it's kind of unfair to single out the oxalates or, you know or whatever the toxin is, just know this. In my opinion, and what I do is, I rotate my greens. So today I might eat these guys. Tomorrow I'll eat shiso. The next day I might have lettuce. The following day I might have arugula. The next day I'll have chicory. The next day I'll have stinging nettles. The next day I might have, you know, miner's lettuce. Then I'll eat chickweed. You know, the problem is, if you go down the supermarket, there's only like a handful of plants, but when you start growing your own food, you can grow so many more varieties than that you money can buy. But even if you're only still buying stuff from the store, I recommend you guys rotate the produce you're eating. So, you know, one day eat lettuce in your green smoothie. One, the next day eat some Swiss chard. The next day eat some kale. The next day eat some, you know, spinach. The next day do some bok choy. The next day do some dandelion greens. The next day do some endive or escarole. You know, throw lettuce in the mix a bunch of times because lettuce has virtually no oxalic acid. Once again, there's high and low. So you want to always eat different foods so you're not always going to get you know a high load of the oxalates in your body you know in this way it's going to be much smarter and you know and, and limit your exposure to these naturally occurring toxins my final point on this topic is is probably the biggest one it's what i call the kicker i think i had some kickers speakers in the olden days but anyways the kicker is this in the article it specifically states even cooking may not destroy the oxalates so well, I can't eat spinach anymore because even steaming it or boiling, it's not good, right? I'm screwed. I just, I just shouldn't eat spinach anymore. Well, check this out. 
in the article they say fermented foods that reduces the oxalate content so now why would fermented foods but not cooking reduce the oxalate content what's the difference well cooking destroys you know and lessens nutrients and destroys all the bacteria and biologics and that's what we want to have in our soil the biologics but the fermentation process uses bacteria to basically break down stuff in the foods so that we can get better assimilation and more nutrition out of it so it's the bacteria that breaks down the oxalates and so now when we eat sauerkraut or fermented foods we're not getting the oxalates so it's a win-win and you know one of the things I've heard is that our body is like 70% bacteria we're only 30% human we're 70% other bacteria but the problem I see is that most Americans have taken a round of antibiotics I mean I'm guilty I've taken antibiotics before when I was a kid didn't know any better the doctor said oh here take the antibiotics when you take the antibiotics it basically destroys all your good probiotics in your intestines these are the same very probiotics that eat the oxalates in the fermented foods the lactobacillus that would basically eat the oxalates in the fermented foods and besides lactobacillus that's just one probiotic there's many different beneficial probiotics that should probably be hanging out in your stomach and you know people don't have a high level of these probiotics because while they may eat foods that will you know um, encourage probiotics to cultivate and stay around if you're not eating them in the first place then you may not have them so I encourage people to eat foods that encourage the probiotics to stick around so fruits and vegetables plant-based diet they love to feed on these foods but also I take some probiotic supplements on occasion to ensure that I have those in me so that my body could better digest the food because guess what in digestion the beneficial bacteria plays a big part in digestion because they'll you know basically digest things you can't digest and poop out nutrients sounds kind of gross but poop out nutrients that you can digest so you know this is one factor in you know having good digestion is having healthy bacterial flora so that's why I do take probiotics also do eat some you know fermented foods in small quantities do I make my meal out of fermented foods no do I have some sometimes absolutely and that's what I think you know people don't have the ability to basically handle the oxalates because they don't have the beneficial microbes in their intestines that break them down to render it healthy for us and think about it a thousand years ago right you know people were eating all kinds of leafy greens but they were eating them they pick them out the garden unwashed they would probably get bacteria on there and they eat them and then they get the beneficial bacteria in them and then they'd be able to handle all the stuff but it's only because we've gotten so far removed from nature both in our diet also in the way the food is cultivated in these days you know it, it's just so extreme and then we get articles that say green smoothies can devastate your health you know in the end I want to encourage you guys to think good better best if you're gonna drink a green smoothie instead of eating McDonald's hamburger I mean I don't have to tell you guys that the McDonald's hamburger in my opinion is gonna devastate your health far more than a green smoothie if you're gonna drink a green smoothie or have some you know fresh fruit off your tree grown in highly mineralized rock dusted soil you know I'd probably pick the fruit meal instead of the green smoothie but you know you, in my opinion you also shouldn't just eat fruit your whole life greens are also an essential nutrient with essential vitamins and minerals and more importantly the phytochemicals that are really good for us so finally in the end I want to encourage you guys to always step up your diet you know if green smoothies are a step in the right direction great if you can take the greens and chew them up into a mush and then swallow them even better if you guys have to juice your greens to get them in because you normally wouldn't get them that's great too my whole message is in the end is simply this you want to just eat as much plant-based foods including a lot of fruits and vegetables as possible to be as healthy as it can but don't go overboard you know don't eat only kale because it's the best or only goji berries because so and so says it's the highest antioxidant food yeah eat some goji berries once in a while but be sure to eat all your locally grown organic foods and especially ones that you grow yourself when they're in season so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode it explained a little bit more about my opinions and what I do for oxalic acid in my diet once again my name is John Kohler with okraw.com we'll see you next time and remember keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables they're the best